Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about, again, I know I've been missing for a little while, but I have been dying to talk to you guys about this for a hot second. It was actually Amanda Bynes' podcast. So Amanda Bynes and Paul Siminski's podcast. I had to look his name up real quick because I know that her ex's name is Paul. And so I just did, I definitely didn't want to get that mixed up or anything like that. Um, Paul, I really liked him. I really liked Amanda. Let me just go ahead and get this out here straight real quick. I miss Amanda's smile so much. Like, y'all, this is not hate on this channel. This is the real Najwa. I don't hate. I don't hate. By the way, if you're with me right now, please go ahead and do me a favor. Hit the like and subscribe button. Hit that bell so you know whenever I post a video. It pushes this out into the algorithm. If you would like to support this channel, I would love to have you support this channel. Me and my husband make this production work. It's just us. And so we would love to have you support this channel by donating a super chat. Super thanks. It helps us do all of our research, run our softwares, have our hardwares, push this out into the algorithm, all that stuff. So I would love to have you guys support this channel. Um, but back to Amanda Bynes, this is, there's not hate here. This channel is called It's the Real Nadra for a reason. And I really just, I almost hate, I hate, I hate, the hate is a strong word. I was grown, I, I was raised with the, with the belief that hate is a strong word, right? But I actually truly do hate the way that our fan culture has been shaped and how it's come alive today. It's like you can't support people. You can't feel good for people. You also can't call them out, but lovingly call them out. And so I just, the people trashing Amanda Bynes, the people dragging her for filth and the podcast and, you know, talking about her all the time, even the, pe the well-meaning people who just are following her every move, you know, just because they're nosy. I hate that. I want to say the one thing I, I miss so much is Amanda's beautiful smile, you know, and I actually love the podcast. I'm so proud of her. C can we just sit here and say that? I'm so proud of her. Why is that so hard? Look at what she's been through. She's been through ish with her parents, with her crazy controlling parents, you know, and the suspect stuff that they did. She's been through ish with the industry since she was young. There is no telling all the stuff that she's witnessed, been put through, has seen. She's rebuilding her life. She's not out here like Britney Spears, who I also love, but I also am not afraid to call her out. She's not out here like Britney Spears, you know, dancing around with knives and, and doing the most. She had that stint in L.A., you know. Okay, it happens, especially when you're going through stuff. But look at the effort that she put into this. I'm so, so proud. Now, with that being said, I did see that there were some slight awkward sort of moments to her. She was holding on to that phone like it was dear life, um, you know, really trying to keep to the questions, the cues and things like that. And I can also tell that her partner, Paul Semisky, who was really, um, he was nice and he was funny. He was very outgoing and engaging and I liked that. But it, it seems like he wasn't really gauging Amanda's tone. And this was the Amanda Bynes and Paul Siminski podcast. So I really hope that she doesn't abandon it, you know, just because, it, A, maybe the partner wasn't the right partner, or B, people were just hanging on it too much. I hope that, and I know this, I know this from experience, that this is not an easy thing to do. But if you make it about you, you know, you make it about you and nobody else, and even if it's not the podcast, even if it's a whole nother project, you know, just make it about having fun, about being you, about relaxing. It's going to be all good. I know she was disappointed that she couldn't get the people like Drake. She couldn't get the people that she really wanted. I really wish that Drake would just reach out to her. I really do. Because um, I think that his energy would really, really be good for her. And, you know, when she went through some of her stint or what, and it doesn't even have to be you know, it doesn't even have to be that they're meeting up for lunch or it could just be a phone call. Say, hey, I heard that, you know, you mentioned me and I was thinking about you. And Drake seems like the type of person who would really do that. You see, she's struggling. I think she needs friends. And I was also thinking she really needs, and I, I, I recommend all of you guys to read my book. I think I mentioned this stuff in my book. I think she really needs to reach out to the people who love her and who she loves and who she would trust with her doggone life. The people from childhood. I'm talking about people from high school that she didn't, or, or even, even earlier, people from elementary school, kindergarten, that she's known 
and she know like this is friends of the family this is aunts this is cousins this is uh this is this is uh family friends this is very 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 close friend family if you guys know what i mean those friend families that you form where the the friends are almost closer than your own family she needs those people around her and even if it's even if she's a little hesitant to have people around her because i know victims of abuse victims of you know um post-traumatic stress etc et things like that I know that sometimes it can be difficult to be present in the moment with people. And you could kind of see that even with the podcast. You know, even if she just talks on the phone, you know, talks on the phone with those people that like, it's good people. She loves them. They love her. What I just described is she just talks on the phone with them from time to time. Doesn't have to be always, you know. Could be quarterly. Could be ha every uh, half of a year. Every half of a year. Whatever. But to just bring back those bonds of communities and slowly step out there and think about you girl don't think about anybody else but i love the podcast i'm so proud of her i hope that she continues people disparaging her looks whatever you know just get out of here get out of here but i will say one thing i miss that amanda vine smile you know that amanda show that i grew up with good lord i miss that smile so much and i hope that she she brings it back to us one day because we we really are aching for it I, I, we really really are Will you dare to love? Check out my book, Millennial and Gen Z Guide to Marriage, Love in the Age of Lies, Deception, and Mistrust. Peer to peer, I will journey with you in the pitfalls, love, laughter, and even in the pains that come with marriage. Despite the bad PR, I believe our generations shouldn't give up on love just yet. This book will make you look at millennial and Gen Z marriage, life, and love with a refreshing new lens. This is our time. Compared to baby boomers and Gen Xers, millennials and Gen Z are getting married less, buying homes later, and suffering poverty more. Whether you've got a bit of hope or you need some hope desperately, here are all the tips and tricks taken from my own experience in my own millennial marriage. You'll grow in love and happiness when you apply them across marriage, other relationships, your career, health, and every aspect of your life. Millennial and Gen Z Guide to Marriage, Love in the Age of Lies, Deception, and Mistrust is available now on Amazon. I'm so happy you're on this journey with me. Let's get started. Order your copy today.